G'day, this is AUSADV Rider. In this video I'll be checking and adjusting my valve clearances. This was actually recorded over a year ago. I started recording halfway through the job. Uh, so I've been sitting on the video for quite some time, but I've decided to upload it. Um, hopefully it'll give you just an idea of what's involved in the job. If you're thinking of doing it yourself, you'll get an idea. Um, it's not going to tell you exactly how to do it, but I highly recommend you get the workshop manual, read through it carefully, and then watch the video. I hope you enjoy. I'm doing this a little ahead of schedule because at the moment I've got the radiator off which gives me good access to the front cylinder head. Normally that's a bit of a pain with the radiator there. So yeah, I've decided to do it early. Um, I've actually already checked them and have the rear camshaft out but we'll get to that later. So my model V-Strom has two spark plugs per cylinder. At some stage there used to be one spark plug per cylinder. I'm not sure when that changed. The first time I serviced the bike I um, went to Peter Stevens and asked for spark plugs for a V-Strom 650 and he gave me two and I didn't know any better. And then uh, yeah, when I got home I realised the bike had four spark plugs in total so I had to go back and get two more. So the manual they had must have been for an older model. Right, yeah, so we removed the spark plugs. I removed the, um, removed the hose off the pair system. Now yeah, that's going to be six mil, isn't it? That'd be right. Now yeah, I'm sitting on my ass. Guarantee as soon as I sit down, I need something else. Radio. I don't know what the light's going to be like for this. I'll just put a bit more light on it. I'm going to check the valve clearance on the front cylinder and then the rear cylinder. I'll um, show you how I've removed the camshaft. Right so we carefully remove the cover. Just be careful of the rubber gasket. Yep, you belong down there, buddy. Oops, radio. So around this side, we uh, remove these covers. It's a 10 millimeter Allen key and a 8 millimeter Allen key. Is it eight? Yeah, it is eight. Remove both of those. Seventeen mil socket. That's to turn your motor over. Now this one's going to be tricky. So inside here we have a mark. It's got an F written on it. That's for the front cylinder, and the line means it's at top dead center. So you want it in the front position to check the front cylinder. When you've done that, you turn it over until you see the R, and you do the rear cylinder. So all your cam should be pointing up at this stage and it's just a matter of checking it with feeler gauges. So point 0.2 fits. The exhaust manifolds between point 0.2 and point 0.3 of a millimetre. Point 0.25 fits. and 0.3 doesn't, so it's between 0.25 and 0.3 which is well within tolerance. So inlet manifolds between 0.1 and 0.2, exhaust is between 0.2 and 0.3. So you just repeat that, repeat that process for every cam and turn the motor over to your rear cylinders at top dead center and repeat the process for the rear cylinder. Okay, so um, to adjust the valve clearance, you have to replace the shim with the correct size shim. 
And to do that, um, this bike has shim under the bucket, so you have to remove the camshaft to do it. To remove the camshaft, first of all, well, you turn the motor over to the correct position, which the manual says front cylinder, top dead center. Remove the cam chain guide. Which is three screws. After I removed the cam chain guide on top here, I cable tied the chain to the sprocket so I don't lose its place. To remove the cam chain tensioner, first you've got to take the center bolt out with a 12 millimeter spanner. Well, I used a bratchet, not too hard. You pull out the, you undo the nut, take out the spring and gasket, and then you've got to remove the rest of the tensioner. It's a five millimeter Allen key. These little quarter inch ratchets to go. Got the bottom on without the extension. Hopefully I'll get the top on with. I can't do the top on without it. Right oh, yeah. So once the cam chain tensioner is out, you can undo these six bolts and remove the cam journal. Making sure your dowels stay put. They'll either stay in the top or the bottom, just make sure you don't lose them. So you can then carefully remove the camshaft. I just move it to the side. As you can see, I've already removed the bucket on this one. That's what it looks like with the bucket in. Yes, yeah, so that's what the bucket looks like. It's just a matter of replacing this shim. My gap is 0.1 of a millimetre too small, so I need a shim that, which is 0.1 of a millimetre smaller than this one. This one is 1.6 millimetres, so I need to get a 1.5 and we should be good to go. Oh, that one's a bit easier to read. Oh, hello. Bit of oil both sides of the shim. And we'll just pump him down there on top of the valve that's it so I've been calling this a bucket the manual calls it a um, tappet I've always heard the term shim over bucket or shim under bucket put some oil on the tappet Slip him back into place. Read out some new shims in. Tap it or bucket is in. Camshaft back into place. So that should be nice and free. You can see this uh, like a flange here that'll go up inside the groove. Keeps it in place, I guess. So that should fit into place fairly easy. Shouldn't have to force it at all. So we just go around nice and even with these. bit by bit so the book says to do these to 10 Newton meters I don't have a uh, torque wrench that does that low just check that should still turn easily There for the fun bit. It's a cam chain tensioner. What happens when you put the spring in? See that? So that plunger pushes against. It'll push against the um, cam chain guide, keeping it tensioned. 
it doesn't push back in. So to get it in, you gotta pull this little lever, there we go. So I've got the bolts in, now I've just got to tighten them. Oh yeah, that feels better. Oh. Right, next is the spring and the bolts and the gasket. This should be the easy bit. See that chain starting to tighten up. Oh yeah, I'll be able to watch it again. Don't forget to remove your cable ties. Oh, I oh, should have left the tag on that. Don't drop it down into the motor. <laughs> oh man, that would be fun. So what I need to do now is just wind the motor over a few times, let everything bed in place and then check the tolerances again. Hopefully we're all right. Well, I'm going to check the rear. I've got the R on the line lined up here, and you should see the camshafts all pointing diagonally up. That's the lobe sticking up there. Now, measuring between the top of the tappet and the bottom of the camshaft with the cam lobe pointing up. I can put my little chain guard back on, chain guide, whatever you want to call it. Next we put this on. goes all right long one goes over there short ones this side okay, so from there it's just a matter of putting everything back together again and then starting the bike up and hopefully it all runs fine uh, like I said, I did this over a year ago. My bike's still running fine, so I must have done a pretty good job. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.